I'm here with Texas Rangers, technically rookie outfielder, Evan Carter. Evan, I appreciate you joining me. Before we get into a lot of different things, I just kind of want to ask you about you know, the last 12 months and, and what that's been like for you. Obviously, a year ago, you're preparing for double A. You get to the big league level at 20 years old, and then you become the youngest player since Mickey Mantle to hit third in the World Series. What has this last 12 months been like for you? Yeah, it's been it's been a whirlwind, just like what you said. Um, you know, going from double A AA to AAA for a little bit and then getting called up. It all happened really fast. I feel really blessed to be able to have gotten to experience that and then at the same time a little bit spoiled just to have gotten to experience the postseason and winning a World Series so quickly, I guess, in my career. I mean, there was people on the team that had been playing for 10 years and never yeah. been to the playoffs. It was crazy, so but it was a ton of fun. There, because you played in the World Series and because you, you know, performed so well on that big stage before really even getting a cup of mm -hmm. coffee in the big leagues, Coming into this year, yeah. your rookie season, there are expectations for you. How have you tried to manage those expectations coming off a World Series championship and now knowing that you're going to be on this team? Yeah, you know, I definitely, you see the expectations, you know, but at the same time, it's kind of like, I just want to go out there and help the team win. So anything that happens on an individual level, apart from winning, um, is just kind of icing on the cake for yeah. me. So it's just, if we go out there and we win another World Series, that's going to be what I want to happen for myself and the team. And then as far as individual goals past that, you know, anything that anything good that happens in my way is just extra. There's tons of ebbs and flows that happen throughout the course of a season. And obviously you haven't played a full season in the big leagues yet, mm -hmm. but from your experience coming up through the minor leagues really quickly, mm -hmm. have you been able to handle those ebbs and flows that are gonna come? Yeah, you know, baseball's really hard. So I'm, I'm thankful that I got to spend so many years in the minors, um, so many seasons and games, being around older players. Um, it's just one of those things that I learned how to fail and how to react to that and get out of it as quick as possible. So I think that that's a really valuable skill to have because I know, you know, this year is not going to be just, you know, perfect the whole time. You know, I'm going to get punched in the mouth and it's going to be how quickly can I respond from that. You know, baseball's way too hard of a sport, way too humbling of a sport to just expect to do good all the time. So figuring out how to, uh, you know, respond to playing bad and getting out of that as quickly as possible. I'm really excited for that. You've had an interesting development journey mm -hmm. to rewind a little bit. You got drafted during COVID, mm -hmm. you know, your senior season got cut short. Mm -hmm. You were 17 when you got yep. drafted That's actually. Right. Yep. So you're, you've always been one of the younger guys at yep. each level, continuing in that in the big mm -hmm. leagues. For you going through that at a time where, I think it was a year mm -hmm. between times you played games, yep. um, how are you able to continue to develop your game in a time that was so wild, not only for the world, but especially as a baseball player? Yeah, I mean, it was, gosh, we were at home, so all the gyms were closed. We had just a couple free weights in the basement, just doing exercises downstairs, um, a net and a tee. I mean, there was really nowhere to go, um, especially where I'm at. The facilities to be able to even go hit in the first place are kind of limited, so when all that's off the table, um, what do you do? Yeah. You know, it's just, it was a tough time and it was for everybody, you know, not just for me. So it was, you know, kind of, we got through it type deal um, and everything worked out the way it was supposed to. Do you feel like because of that, you've had to kind of expedite your development, whether that's as a player, whether that's your body and, and kind of get yourself like, okay, I should have been here, but we couldn't do that because of COVID. Now that you're at the big league level say, okay, I'm going to maybe work on this that I wasn't able to do over the last couple of years to get myself prepared? Yeah, I was really thankful, especially when I got to the Instructional League camp. I, I guess they had an extended one that year where we didn't get to play a season. Um, Carlos Cardoza has been my manager, gosh. Low A, high A, double A, we've we kind of come up together. Yeah. So he has been unbelievable as far as, you know, just for me learning baseball more. Um, I feel like there's just been so many people in my corner that have helped me I guess if you're talking about expediting the learning process of, you know, hey, you got to learn how to play the game. You know, you can be athletic, but if you don't know baseball, like it doesn't really, you know, translate all the time. So I've been really thankful to have those people in my corner. Um, and then now too, being around older players that have been there and done that and a lot of really good, you know, hitters that I get to learn from and watch. And, you know, the Corey Seegers, Marcus Simeons, all these people that, you know, he's won you know, the MVP of the World Series. Like, yeah. he's one of the best players on the planet and getting to watch what his routine looks like and, you know, how they prepare every day, it's been great. You're around those veteran players like Corey, mm -hmm. like Marcus, yep. but yourself and 
another young guy in Wyatt Langford are the guys who are going to be, you know, cornerstones of this franchise for a mm -hmm. long time. What has it been like to get to know Wyatt over the last year or so since he got drafted and, you know, potentially being able to be in the same outfield with him, not only this season, yeah. but for a long time? You know, I just met Wyatt this spring training, yeah. so I didn't get to meet him all. Obviously, he was in the Rangers organization for, you know, six months or whatever before I met him. And he's been great, you know, really tried to get to know him off the field, yeah. I guess, kind of get to know him as a person. Um, obviously, he's an incredible baseball player, so um, I think it's going to be really good. It's exciting to kind of have that, you know, somebody my age that yeah. I get to re relate to a little bit more. Um, not to downgrade anybody else on the team, but, you know, it's a little bit different trying to hang out with 35-year-olds yeah. than it is with somebody my own age, so it's been really good. You, you, weren't, you couldn't even be Leo legally allowed to change yeah, yeah, yeah. most of the playoffs. So. Yeah. yeah um, I've learned recently that you're a big car guy, so one thing I want to ask you is if you can compare Evan Carter to a car, what car would Evan Carter be? What car is Evan? So my favorite car, my dream car, one that I would just absolutely love to have is a Porsche 911. Okay. So I feel like the Porsche 911 is under the hood performance wise is just one of the best that you can get. Like it's, you know, the fastest, quickest, best transmission, super nice interior, whatever. Yeah. But when you look at it from the outside, it's not super flashy. It's not like something that you would see like, oh, a Lamborghini or a Ferrari, but it's, you know, just as good, if not yeah. better than them. So I, I, I like that comparison, okay. I guess. The Porsche 911, I, yeah. I'm with that. I'm with there that. I think a lot of people out there watching are, are with that there too. There we go. <laughs> uh, you're a Tennessee guy, yeah. native. You were committed to go to Duke before uh -huh. the draft. Yeah. Now. They don't let everybody into Duke. They obviously have a great program. What were you gonna major in at, at Duke? Um, so I was planning on majoring in biology. Yeah. Um, I really wanted to go through dental school and then ended up being like an endodontist or an oral surgeon, kind of somewhere in that route, but we're a long way from that. It's always <laughs> fine. <laughs> was that always something where it's like, all right, baseball's cool, but yeah. I just, being a doctor would be something that would be cool too. Well, you know, I, I loved baseball, but I'd never really thought that I was good enough to kind of make a living with it. And at the end of the day, you know, it was for me, I could use baseball to help pay for school. Yeah. So that for me, that was what was important at the time. Like, wow, you know, I wouldn't necessarily be able to get into Duke without baseball. So I'm using that to be able to get into this really good school and, you know, help pay for it and this, that, and the other. Career paths change really quick. I yes. Guess. Yeah. So many people talk about your maturity. And I, I, I mean, everything that you just said kind of goes to that. Where does that come from for you off the field, outside of baseball, where you can be 20 years old, uh, get into the big leagues, you can be 21 playing in the World Series, and you know the pressure of all that doesn't get to you? I appreciate it. I, um, you know, I feel like I've grown up. I had an older brother, so I was always around just older people. You know, my parents were great role models for me, and I, I guess it would just kind of have to be. I feel like I've always kind of, whether it's playing baseball, hanging out with people, it's always just a little bit older than me, I guess. So, and especially I feel like when you get drafted out of high school coming into pro ball, you have to grow up yeah. really quick, especially like, okay, hey guys, you know, you've never been to Arizona, you're new to professional baseball, you don't know anybody, but you're coming to instructional league in a COVID year for eight or nine weeks, whatever it was, and you can't see anybody, you're, yeah. you're stuck here. So you gotta grow up and figure it out really quick. So I guess that kind of expedited my, my growing up process for sure. Has it been, weird at all kind of being thrust into spotlight mm -hmm. i obviously the world series is as much spotlight yeah, as you yeah. get in, yeah. in the sport but mm -hmm. for you you know being a guy that kind of shies away from that have mm -hmm. you had to learn to be comfortable you know being in front of people obviously talking to people and doing interviews mm -hmm. and things like that you know i i've never really had a problem as far as like public speaking goes or talking yeah. to people i just don't like talking about me per se um so it's been a little bit different um but I also find it really easy to talk about other teammates too in a lot of the interviews, so it's been fun. As this year goes on and more people learn about Evan Carter, is there something that people don't know about you that you do want them to know about you as you continue to grow in your career? Off the top of my head, I, I wouldn't think so. I try and be as transparent as possible. I try and be who I am as a person off the field. I try and have that reflect on the field. Yeah. So I would hope that, you know, you see the way I play, the way that I treat others, the way I, you know, respect the game, my faith. Like I try and put who I am off the field. I try and let that, you know, kind of shine on the field too. Last thing before I let you go. 
uh, we talked about the maturity. Uh, I've learned that you are a Jimmy Buffett guy. Now, I'm not going to lie. There we go. Not that many 20, 21-year-olds are Jimmy Buffett guys. So kind of how did that come about? So is that your parents? Did you just find it like, you know what? I rock with this. <laughs> yeah. My brother my brother was really into it. Um, he always listened to him. And I was like, hey, I do. I like this. This is pretty cool. Um, and I was fortunate enough to see him in concert before he passed away, too. So I was really happy about that. But yeah, no, he's, he's great. I love listening to him. Evan, I appreciate the time. Yeah. Good luck this season and the rest of the way. Thank you. I appreciate it.